What's up guys, this is Chris with Half Chrome. Today I've got the Wayne Lux K8 laser engraving machine. And I'm gonna tell you all the best things about it, the bad things about it, the things not to do, the things to do with it. And of course, because it's Half Chrome, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade it and let it do much more uh, than it's set out to do. This thing can be more than an engraving machine. Really out of the box, it's for engraving flat surfaces. I'm going to show you how to cut with it and I'm going to show you how to engrave circular and even semi-circular conical like um, items like these uh, insulated mugs over here. So stick with me. I'll be right back to review the Wayne Lux K8. So the K8 has a front and back door so of course I had to fly through it see a lot of drone stuff on this channel and we just couldn't resist the opportunity so the K8 was delivered in three separate packages one for the laser engraver one for the vacuum system and finally one for uh, the roller optional attachment now in my opinion the vacuum system isn't so optional. I love having it. Dealing with smoke is a huge issue with these engravers and cutters, so I would definitely go for it. It's really well integrated. As for the roller, you could decide for yourself after watching this video, you'll see a lot of things I've done with it. So first up, the things I really like about this. So setup was easy. This thing is all enclosed, turnkey. I set it up in Lightburn uh, very easily, uh, identifying it as a laser GRBL uh, to run off of that. Um, the instructions were lacking a little bit, but uh, that's what I picked and it's working just fine. Set up the bed size, 130 millimeters by 130, and is ready to go. Um, no issues at all. So that's really nice. My favorite thing is this vacuum system. For a little bit extra, you can add this on, um, and it's just really cool uh, to see how it works. I mean, it's very small fan, somehow it gets the job done. I don't have a good vacuum system for my much bigger algo laser yet, and so now that it's winter time and I can't just blow everything outside, um, well, I can, it just makes the whole basement really cold. Um, this is my go-to. Of course, it's limited in size, but um, really, really nice to have this vacuum system. The bed that it comes with can be easily uh, raised and lowered uh, like this. It's nice and easy to do. It has a pretty good range, um, so that's also really nice. Like I said, pretty much turnkey. I found the laser to be super precise, super crisp. Um, I'm getting really sharp, detailed features out of this. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is do some slate coasters. Um, I set up uh, for Jack's wife. She wanted some Blackhawks thing uh, coasters for her um, for her coworker. So I set that up and just really impressed with the detailed lines it could do. Really do love engraving on slate. It's also nice that it has these two doors. Uh, you can access things um, from both sides, which can come handy especially when you need to change out the laser. Now let me talk about that, because that's one of the things I don't like about this. So the issue I have is the bed that it comes with is super glossy, like polished, stainless steel, chrome plated, something like that. Now when it's super glossy, that means that if you kind of make a mistake with your engraving, or if you try to cut through, you run the risk of reflections, basically perfect reflections. It's perfectly flat, perfectly shiny, mirror finish. That light comes right back up into the laser and can burn the laser out. Now they tell you in the instructions, do not try to engrave anything that is a mirror finish of metal. Um, but then why do they make the bed a mirror finish? So I'll show you what I use to fix that after I burned out this laser. Um, by accident, they sent me a new one uh, right away, came quick from California, I think, and, um, and it worked great. It, it worked just like the original, the new one. Um, pretty easy to change out. It's just two screws and a connector, but you don't want to really run that risk. So always have wood on the platform in case you go over with your engraving 
or do what I did and put an aluminum uh, piece of sheet metal underneath. So let's talk about upgrades uh, now that I'm talking about that aluminum. So that aluminum came with a, um, a two trees uh, engraving bed. So they don't make, you know, Wayne Lux or anybody else doesn't make these honeycomb uh, beds for doing laser cutting for machines this small. Um, so I had to make my own. So I cut the smallest one I could find on Amazon. It was like 20 bucks on sale. Maybe it's normally 25, 30. Um, I cut it up on the bandsaw. I cut some pieces of scrap aluminum I had, glued them to the side with JB Weld. By the way, I'll put links in the description, all these things. And now I have a bed that fits in there, which lets me cut things much more cleanly without all the smoking, burning on the backside. Um, helps the smoke get out of there as well. Uh, they send it with some rubber bumpers. I cut them up. Um, some of the bumpers help set it off so the smoke can then get out from underneath. And uh, some of the bumpers I added some extra layers to help me align it on the bed that's in there. I took the aluminum sheet metal uh, that, that comes with it to go underneath here. I cut that as well and I just double sticky tape that on the platform. It is a diffuse, kind of a matte finish. It's not glossy. So if the laser does cut through something or if I make a mistake, whether I'm using this or not, it's now gonna scatter the light all over the place, not be bright enough to do damage to anything. Do you need to do this? No, if you're not gonna cut through things, uh, you don't need something like this. But I found, you know, it really just adds to what you can do with a laser engraver. So I made this, this is a Christmas ornament that I made, um, very cool, you can do things like this and why not get the most out of a multi hundred dollar machine that you can, um, you're gonna really appreciate having something like this. It's unfortunate they don't make it, um, but I'll send you the leak, the one I use, and you can find some way to cut it up. All right, now let me pop out the rotary attachment that came with this. It's like a roller, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about that and how I got that working as well. So this fits in here. Uh, it's a little difficult to route the wire, but you can do it. It plugs in with the USB. And uh, let me kind of snake it out of here. A little difficult. There it comes. And you can see uh, right away I've done some modifications. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, this uh, is an additional cost. Doesn't come included, but it's fully integrated. Works really easy. Pretty easy to set up with light burn. Um, I, what I use for settings is I used a 25 millimeter as the roller diameter. And in terms of in light burn, you have to also enter in for unknown reasons, a length, like a roller length. And I just used uh, two pi r, which is the circumference of this thing. Um, it has a little calculator in there to do. I think it's 76 or something. Um, so, um, so yeah, just use that, um, and, uh, and it seems good to go. It does a pretty good job engraving. Now these rollers do have backlash and I kind of thought that that meant this thing was garbage because I tried doing some sample line engraving. When you do line engraving, it goes back and forth. And so backlash causes a real problem. Now when you do fills, which is really what you're going to do most of the time on something like this, this is using a fill, uh, the, it really only rolls one direction. So what you want to do is let it roll past uh, the first row, the first pass of cutting that you're going to do. And the way to do that is just set up some little feature, some little rectangle, just past your first layer, maybe a couple millimeters, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch or so and um, set it up there and set it to just a 1% fill uh, laser power. And so that means it's not going to engrave anything at 1%, but it's going to force it to roll past. And then from then on, you're only rolling one direction. Backlash doesn't matter anymore. So I thought this thing was garbage. It's working for me. So the next thing is I had to find something cylindrical. So I quickly realized that putting in anything with a taper to it, anything conical like this, was a problem. It has a different diameter at both ends and as soon as it starts to roll it immediately jumps off the rollers. It doesn't work. So I bought something. I said yeah you know let me get something I can engrave with this roller. So I bought this. It's a tumbler. If you look on Amazon or somewhere you can find tumblers. This is my little half chrome logo on here 
and um, that worked uh, just fine. Just works fine. I did a test run by taping some colored, like some red paper to it, and just using a very light uh, color so you can just make sure you understand how the system works. Um, and then it worked just fine. But I'm like, you know what? Cylinders, you know, I just got to do more with this. You know, who buys tumblers? Pretty much most of the cylinders out there, most of the, the drinking devices, whatever you want to call them, you can get, have some kind of taper to them. And um, it just wasn't working. So that's where I came up uh, with this idea. So I started off with just some, I'm going to plug this, just some V uh, cut wood that I did cut in here. Um, so I designed this actually in Lightburn and um, some V-shape and I hoped it would just slide on there so that only one end was in contact. Uh, but however, it just had a little too much friction and the roll, it would start to walk around and fall off. So then what I realized was I could cut some, um, some holes in there and screw some bearings on. So I went into the garage, pulled off the roller blades that haven't been used in years, took two bearings out, the wheel that spun the best, and screwed them in. Now the inner diameter of a roller blade bearing is 8 millimeters, so I found some 8 millimeter screws. I don't throw anything away, so um, whenever you install a TV, it comes with a bunch of different screws. 8 millimeters, one of them. Screwed that into some 7.5 millimeters holes. I cut in the wood and I was good to go. You could see I've got four layers of five millimeter um, plywood that I cut in here. Um, five millimeters is pushing the limits here. I'd recommend doing more cuts of actually three millimeters. It cuts a lot cleaner in here. Um, and then I uh, just screwed those in, double sticky taped it down, and it worked. I couldn't believe it. I am now engraving like a hundred times more things than you could engrave um, uh, without it. So otherwise you're going to be stuck with perfect cylinders, uh, which is very limiting. Um, different angles, different things, you might need a little bit different adjustment here. I will go ahead and upload this Lightburn file, maybe a DX, DXF file as well of what I made here. It's not uh, gorgeous, it was very quick and dirty, but it works. I attached it on here with just some uh, do double sticky tape. I'll throw my favorite double sticky tape up in the description as well. The scotch, very thin clear scotch stuff doesn't cut it. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description. Okay, so with that roller, now I'm doing cylinders. I'm doing all kinds of cones. My kids always, when they say I'm not cool, they say I'm not him. Uh, so I, to remind them, I put I am him on here. Uh, for my wife, she's labor and delivery nurse. I've got L and D, I've got some little baby feet, I've got uh, at your cervix, and then a picture of some anatomy down there. So um, very cool, very fun, I mean Christmas is good this year, easy, lots of things. I'm just pulling these things out of cabinets and engraving them and uh, boxing them up and call them a present. So I'm getting off easy this year. Let me just show you a couple other things I've done. I've done a ton of slate things. Uh, look at them here. I don't have them here. I already boxed them up and wrapped them, giving them to my brother, my dad, uh, my in-laws. I've got all kinds of things. Here's, um, here's a, a coaster, stainless steel coaster bought on Amazon. I spray painted it with black enamel. I'll put that link in the description. Black enamel spray paint and then very, very quickly engrave that off. Uh, with the laser. So that's really nice. Um, you can engrave on stainless steel. Now I will say the first batch I bought, it did okay. I bought another set from a different supplier on Amazon, didn't engrave at all. There's lots of different grades of stainless steel. It doesn't always work. Um, it's a lot of work, it's slow, and overall I'm not that excited about it. It's just too finicky, um, and I don't think it's the equipment, I think it's the stainless steel. But, I mean, if you want to try it, you can see here, it will come out. You can do different colors. Um, I did a ton of trials, spent, a, wasted, you might say, a ton of time. Uh, you can see blues, purples, yellows, browns, um, all kinds of things you can get uh, if you are so motivated and you find the right stainless steel and you really get the laser dialed in. So great for engraving on stainless steel and you can even engrave some stainless steels. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, little bed I made there to help get rid of the smoke, I made this really cool ornament from an image I found online. 
Um, I do recommend cutting three millimeter wood. Um, this thing doesn't have a super powerful air assist. The fan for the laser does blow some smoke out of the way, um, but this isn't the most powerful uh, vacuum pickup. Some smoke does build up in there. And as a result, uh, and it's only a 10 watt laser, you know, it does get hard to cut through more than three millimeters, but it does a great job with three millimeters. Um, this is a little cardboard uh, piece. I cut some patterns uh, for my permanent, I guess you'd call her our permanent uh, daughter slash Venezuelan exchange student. Been living with us for a few years and she's an architecture student. So I can cut all kinds of things with laser cutters. Uh, this is a little pattern I did. I also cut out some washers here. I needed washers uh, for these roller bearings to keep the outer race uh, from rubbing. I didn't have any eight millimeter inner diameter washers, so I cut them out of cardboard. It is so fun. I'll tell you one of the favorite things I have about laser cutters is that you could just do very quick projects. I could design something in 3D, 3D print it, hopefully it works, and it's gonna take hours. I can get this out of my laser and cutter in a matter of minutes. And so it's just so fun to have so much power to do fun projects uh, with a laser cutter. So that's about it guys. I told you how to uh, upgrade this with the rollers. Um, adding here, I will upload that file for you. I'll give you the links to all the supplies I'm using here. I showed you it can engrave slate, stainless steel, it can carve paint off of things. I showed you how to do cylinders and how to do uh, tapered products like this. Um, the world is your oyster at this point. I mean, the only thing is, is it's small. So it's area is about that big. So if you want to do bigger stuff, this isn't the right tool. If you want something bench top, easy to use, included vacuum system. I mean, I've been very, very happy with this. I have been making Christmas presents all day long with it. I don't have a roller setup for my bigger cutter, so I can barely squeeze this thing in here somehow. Um, and it's been a very powerful tool for me, especially because I don't have a vacuum system for my bigger laser. So really been liking the Wayne Lux K8. All right, guys, I hope you understand how to use this thing now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to halfchrome.com. Check out all our other videos. I will see you guys next time here on Half Chrome.